Hello, my name is Jeff Bornstein. Welcome to Life After War on EmpowerMe.TV. I am your host, along with my wonderful co-host, Miss Kimberly. Hello. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. This is our first episode, and we've got some amazing veterans with some great stories today. Yes, we do. And, and now, you did not serve. You were, uh, you were a civilian. You were a PFC, mm -hmm. private civilian. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so what did you do? Well, um, I worked at an Army Depot plant, and I worked in transportation, but that's classified, so I can't give out too much information, but we did make bombs. They blew shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so our first guest, uh, our first guest, uh, I'm sure, is very experienced in this kind of stuff. A uh, very dear friend of ours. I want to go ahead and introduce him. I'll let him tell you about, I'll give you a little uh, a backstory about him. Uh, he's originally from Seattle, Washington, started off in the Navy, then he went into a different branch. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, please welcome our very first guest, Michael Mayo. Hey, Michael, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Welcome. I'm so excited for you to be here. I'm excited about being here. <laughs> so let me ask you. So, so uh, you, uh, you, you were in the service. You went from the Navy into which branch? The Army. The Army. Yeah. 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 yeah so um, <clears throat> after I did uh, two tours, uh -huh. I. Did you say uh, tour or tour? Tour. Tur, okay. Tur, tur, <laughs> tur. tur. We'll You're used that. to me saying yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> so after, after I did that, um, I wanted to be a little bit more hands-on. Nice. I met some people during some uh, training ops in uh, Thailand, and uh, they, they made a good deal for me to go into the Army. So I uh, got on a plane, flew to, uh, where was it? Kentucky. Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Flew to Kentucky. <clears throat> and then... Uh, was wearing an army uniform and kind of bounced around from there. But Good for you, man. That's that's awesome, man. It is. Well, so which, which uh, you did five tours. I was reading your bio, and you did five five tours. Yeah, I did. Uh, <coughs> I did uh, two tours in Afghanistan, three tours in Iraq, um, wow, man. and then I did a lot of traveling on top of that. So wow. wow. What? So what was the? Let's, let's start here. Um, you obviously did five wars. Uh, what was the? What was the scariest thing uh, that, that you can remember in, in any of the wars that you were in? Um, you know, I... Anything just pop in your head or...? Nothing. 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 Yeah. It's, so you uh, saw like actually, no, you know what? Something did. Uh, mm -hmm. Driving through the middle of the desert with no headlights on in the middle of the night with no moon, trying to use a single nod to try to find out where you're driving. Oh. Uh, anybody that's been in the Middle East knows, I mean, there's a lot of cliffs and dives. Right, yeah. And Whoa. You, I mean, and there's no, like, you don't get any three-dimensional stuff. So just driving, and uh, you're on your way to a mission or you're on your way back. And uh, especially since they somehow love the prank of putting me at the head of that. So <laughs> right. I, you know, there's no 3D perception. There's no depth. There's nothing. You're just driving and being like, well, I just really hope there's nothing out there in front of me. So. Wow. Um, well, what was? Let me ask you this. So you had that, which kind of maybe might go into this next question for me. I'd find the humor. What was the funniest thing that happened over there? Well, funniest to me, or funniest that most people would think funny. <laughs> funny, um, funny, Michael Mayo. Funny to Michael Mayo. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather keep that to myself for now. I don't think that the people <laughs> at home would really appreciate that story. But uh, right. there's, uh, <clears throat> you get conditioned to a lot of things that uh, most people don't get conditioned to. So your sense of humor changes with it. And mm -hmm. so one day you find yourself telling a story and, mm -hmm. and people just give you the most god awful looks. So <laughs> right. I learned my lesson. <laughs> nice. I'm stopping there. Done. Well, so, so Michael, what was the most memorable thing that you experienced? Um, you know, just uh, it wasn't any one thing. It was um, mm -hmm. for three of my tours, well, two for, for my full group, but uh, mm -hmm. I got to know Some a lot of those guys here. very well. Wow. Which one are you now? Which one are you? <laughs> Can't you, you don't go like this? <laughs> I know oh, which no. one you no, are. No, that is not me. Okay. I'm actually the one standing next to him with my tongue sticking out. <laughs> okay. That's exactly what I thought. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I love so, uh, that shot, man. I love that shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, you guys locked and loaded it. there? Uh, we, I don't it think It doesn't matter. You actually, got a bunch of badasses so it wouldn't matter anyway. You just throw the, just yeah. throw the weapon are, at me, I'm those done. Are, we're with the uh, 187th Infantry Regiment, which nice. is the uh, Rockassons out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Nice. Wow. And uh, that was, um, we had just, I think, gotten a FOB Falcon, which is just south of Baghdad. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like, uh, right, when we, right when we got there, we were, still had a couple new people in our group. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we, we came under fire almost immediately, right, when the helicopter was touching down. Wow. So it was like, oh uh, you know, welcome type of deal. But uh, that's, what, that's one of the scariest things I could probably, I would say, <laughs> scary. Well, 
Not really. Okay. I mean, you've oh. never seen them shoot. So, okay. um, <laughs> you know, it, you, you end up being like, all right. And, all right. Um, so, Michael, you li you literally, as soon as the chopper like landed, you guys got out of the plane, and yeah. it was just like instant. Yeah, we dropped right our we dropped our packs, and we were getting out of the helicopter, and um, um, it started at Charlie Gate, which was on the west side, and so mm -hmm. we uh, we went over, and that was it. You did wow. your job. Everybody everybody got their CIBs pretty much. Immediately. Tell our viewers uh, wow. who are not military what CIB means. Some may not know what Combat that is. Infantryman Badge. Um, a Combat Infantryman Badge is given to an infantryman who has experienced full on combat for his first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very prestigious it award, is. even though, I mean, mm -hmm. it's basically your job to get one so right very wow. cool well so now you've you've gone you've done five tours and you've seen uh you've seen the defecation hit the rotary blade you've <laughs> seen it all man so now you come home all right uh -huh. you co you've come home and uh um what was the toughest thing about coming home coming home um I mean, you see stuff portrayed on, uh, in movies and like that. I mean, we know it's, it's not, you know, and look, we're, we're in the business, we're all in the business, we Hollywood mm -hmm. it up. But what is it really like? I mean, in the short version, what's the short version? Well, Bullet point it. Um, you, you get used to one lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so when you, you come home, I mean, I, honestly, I'm, I'm still in some ways not really ever came back because mm -hmm. well, I still um, expect people to, to act a certain way. And I still... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm still always in that military mindset of like, you know, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is, you know, and you get very rigid in some ways and, yeah. and in some ways spoiled because you kind of know what's going to come. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. People kind of freak out like, what did you just call me? Yeah. Right? Um, and, and in many ways, you end up missing a lot of the things that you absolutely dreaded and hated about um, yeah. being deployed or being away from your family. Mm. So. Yeah, especially with your family. I know you're married and you have um, a couple of children, I too. Yes, I have so. three children. Wow. Maybe another one? Oh, that's good. <laughs> We're hoping. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, we got a picture right yes. here. Yes, lovely, oh, Annie. lovely um, wife, Annie. She's awesome. That is literally right when we got to uh, Los Angeles. Okay. Oh, yeah, so that, uh, when you nice. moved? That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so picture. I flew her. I didn't want her having to be on the road, but her dad actually was is a wonderful man and uh, mm -hmm. drove with me pretty much nonstop from Seattle to here. Oh, and that's so cool. We told them that we were actually staying over the night at a hotel. We didn't. We just kept on driving. So wow. 6 a.m. we rolled up, oh, coffee, donuts, question. and... Okay everything else so has what you learned in the service translated well into life after war and if so can you tell our viewers how um, in some ways yes um, mm -hmm. in some ways you know you I um, I learned a lot about integrity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about um, personal responsibility mm -hmm. and uh, these kind of things and, and they've really helped um, mm -hmm. with just making a life for myself and trying to make me the person I want to be and in some ways, I mean, it kind of shoots you in the foot because once again, you kind of get a, a different story wherever you go and right. yeah. different mm -hmm. people, different expectations. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, one of the hot button topics is, is uh, PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, you and I are buddies. Uh, I know a little bit about you, you know a little about me. Uh, but uh, have you ever suffered with anything like this? And or do you know anyone who is going through it right now? Absolutely. I know a lot of people besides myself. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I, I like to call it reconditioning in many ways mm. because I don't think it's a it's a wrong thing. Um, okay. I you know I, I suffer from a lot of uh, depression and stuff like that, and uh, mm. a lot of that's just because you know you can only spend so much time in a in a state where uh, you're constantly having adrenaline going and and you know you you have these um, situations that are constantly occurring and they're always new and they're always exciting. Yeah. And then to come back and life just seems kind of boring after that. Right. And so your, your yeah. body's like always, it's always expecting something. And mm -hmm. so you're always, you know, you're doing that. And sure. it can be, it can be very, it can be very hard and testing. Right. But um, I can only it imagine. is what it is. Well, that said, uh, did you meet, did, uh, did you make any close friends over there while you were serving and, and mm -hmm. do you keep in touch with them today? Um, some. I have a, a few people that I stay in close touch with. Um, and one of the things I love about military relationships is um, some of them, you know, I don't, I don't talk to them on a daily basis, weekly mm -hmm. basis. Some of them I talk to them maybe every other year, mm -hmm. but I might as well have been talking to them every day of right. my life. And, right. and the, all the key mm -hmm. stuff is always there. That's you know, awesome. 
yeah. we can't we communicate so yeah it's all about communication all about communication it really is well if you had to sum it up in one thought uh, how did your service affect your life today it made me a much better person That's it awesome. made me uh, you know, realize and appreciate a lot of the things that I took for granted my whole life. So, mm. That's As, awesome. most of us do. Right? Yeah, we do. You know, I, I always mm -hmm. joke about it, but it's so true. You know, you, you're getting your ass shot off wherever you're at, right? And you come home and you're standing in a bank line that's 10 minutes long, and all of a sudden it's not a big deal because you just got your ass shot off, right? Oh, no. Or, or sitting in traffic. Or sitting for, in traffic, uh, right? You take three and a half hours. <laughs> right, right. It's not a big through. deal, right? No, in fact, it's a great time. It's to turn right. on some music, right. relax. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Is there that's anything so else you'd like to add that maybe we didn't cover here today? No, just um, if, if anybody's looking into going into the military, you know, you got to know first and foremost that you are a number. And uh, it's, it's not a matter of learning that you're a nobody. It's a matter of learning that you're the same as everybody else, no matter how different you are. So Very cool. But uh, it's, it's a great experience if you're, if you're willing to put everything you got into it. So. That's awesome. You're awesome, man. And, and, and I'm honored and proud yes. that we're going to be neighbors. Yes. I know, we're so excited. Uh, yeah, a couple doors away, not, <laughs> too, yep. not too shabby. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, it's been an honor having you on our show. Well, thank and you, as, thank you so much and, for and as I'm gonna, Thank you, and as I'm going to, uh, to all of our vets, thank you so much for your service, buddy. I'm, thank you. I can't believe they paid me to do it, to be honest. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Mayo, great. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. If you want to be a, uh, if you're a combat veteran and want to be a guest on uh, Life After War, please go ahead and check out the little thing right down there at the bottom of your screen. You can email us mm -hmm. at lifeafterwar at empowerme.tv. Mm -hmm. When we come back, our next guest is a true patriot, right? Yep, and folks, we've got some uh, shout outs from our viewers out there, veterans all across the country. And please stay tuned for more Life After War on empowerme.tv. Hi, I'm former U.S. Army Fire Support Specialist Curtis Waltermeyer, and you're watching Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. This is Air Force Major General David Craddock. As I played him in a movie, I'm not a real general, I'm an actor. My name is Don Maxwell, and I have a shout out for all of you real servicemen. Thank you for your service. You're watching Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. My name is Helgi Helgeson. I'm a retired hospital corpsman third class from the USS Puget Sound. And I want to give a shout out to all the U.S. military personnel throughout the world. And you're watching Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. Hi, welcome back to Life After War. My name is Jeff Bornstein, your host, along with the lovely Miss Kimberly. Well, hi, everybody. It's awesome to be back. And uh, so our, our next guest, he joined the Army. Uh, he joined the Army. He dropped out. He didn't drop out of high school. I'm going to let you tell him his story because I'm not Mm -hmm. Navy. Ooh, how? <laughs> he was in the Navy. He served on a destroyer, and he also worked for <laughs> NBC. And he um, was a comedian, an actor, and a model. And at the age of 63, do you know what he said? What? He said anything is possible. Hopefully, 64. <laughs> Just saying. Man. Well, uh, please welcome our guest, Mr. Rory O'Connor. Hey, Rory, how you doing, buddy? Very Sorry good. about that Army Navy welcome reference, Rory. man. Well, you That's could have been like good. Michael Mayo, our, la our last. He went from Navy. There's a reason why he went Navy to Army. I'm just saying, okay? <laughs> Whatever works, my friend. It's working now. Well, thank you so much for being on our show, man. I'm honored. Uh, honored to have you, man. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. So, uh, where are you from originally? I was born and raised in beautiful downtown Burbank. Burbank! Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Burbank's beautiful. And I worked at NBC for 45 years after I got out of the service, 200 yards away from where I was born. Wow, how cool is that? Wow. Yeah, very cool. And so you, you uh, right out of high school, or you, didn't, you didn't finish high school. I, no, I did finish high you school, did, okay. but I actually enlisted in the Navy prior to getting out of high school. Mm -hmm finished high school, there was a thing called the CASH program. As uh -huh. soon as I got out of high school, I went right in the Navy. I was 17 years old. Nice. Wow. And I, you know, I love the Navy. I had the best time ever. Uh, when I went in there, I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, they took us at 5.30 in the morning, set us up here in LA, got us on a bus, did all our physicals and everything. Uh -huh. Took me down there to San Diego at the uh, you know recruit depot mm -hmm. and then uh, got to bed about three o'clock in the morning at four o'clock they threw a trash can down the middle of the barracks <laughs> woke us up and in that few hours i grew up i became a man 
Wow. Yeah. And because I learned I was in charge of my own life sure. and no longer did I have mama protecting me. Right, 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 right. So wow. that that's, I love, you know, and, and I think anyone who has gone through basic kind of has that same similar story, you know, mm -hmm. as we all do. But uh, so you were in Vietnam. Yes. In Vietnam. And mm -hmm. uh, what action, if any, what did you see and, and how did that go? And, and what rank did you come out? And were you officer enlisted? What did you do? Well, I was always an enlisted man. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually went to Vietnam. Uh, I had been in the nuclear power program with mm -hmm. submarines mm -hmm. initially when I went into the service. When I had gone to nuclear power school, I actually got hit by a car, oh, wow. took me out of the nuclear program. So then I had all this training and things, so they utilized me as a tech rep and flew me all over the world to repair submarines. Nice. I love that and everything, and I got tired of not being where the action was. Mm -hmm. So I said, and I told my wife I was married at the time, and we weren't getting along anyway, so I just said, I'm going to Vietnam. And I ended up uh, calling what they had in uh, Washington, D.C. was called my detailer that uh -huh. said where you were going to go. I said, I want to go to Vietnam. Well, I had just come out of destroyer school because mm -hmm. I had been in Nolens, Louisiana, putting the trip DE 1075 in commission, actually building the ships down there in Nolens. Uh -huh. So you were a ship builder. So you, 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 I learned how I, I was there as a representative of the Navy building these ships. Wow. So I learned about them. So I was, I was pretty hip as to right. how they were built and how to repair them. So I went to <laughs> Vietnam, flew over, caught the USS trip, DD 946, and was on station with them. I was at that time a first class, which is an E6 electrician. Mm -hmm. I was in charge of the electrical <laughs> department. And the captain on there, actually appointed me as the acting R division officer because he was having problems with his little ensign. If you remember Mr. Roberts, one time when uh, uh, we went to general quarters, they'd come out and the ensign had peed himself <laughs> and they made him the laundry and morale officer, just like out of <laughs> Mr. Roberts. And since I was the next wow. person in line, he made me the acting division officer wow. and in charge of the uh, R division on the ship. Wow. Now. This is in wow. Vietnam, right? Yes. This is Vietnam. So, mm -hmm. did you, I mean, if you had to just pluck something out of the air, that was the most scariest thing uh, that happened to you or that you saw. Okay. What would that, would that the be? The thing that happened the scariest to me is we were actually bombing, you know, sending, sending. we had five-inch shells that we were sending on, on shore, mm -hmm. and we were in general quarters, and something had happened in one of the shaft alleys. Yeah. And the shaft alleys are a thing that go all the way from the front of the back, front of the ship to the back, mm -hmm. and you know the shafts are like this big around, mm -hmm. and that's what turns the screws, which is actually the propeller in the back that makes you go. And something had happened, and I had to go down and figure out what was going on. And it had to be it had to be a thing with the sound powered phones or something mm -hmm. that they couldn't communicate. Mm -hmm. So I went down there, and I, as I was coming back up, they changed what the ship the direction the ship was going. The hatch came down, smacked me on the oh. head threw me down into the shaft alley, and I was knocked out, and I don't know for how many hours. When I come up, I was covered with blood, and they <sighs> stitched me up and stuff, and then they sent me to the hospital in Sasebo, Japan. But that was like, man, talk about coming up thinking everything's okay, and get bam, and I can still feel a big dump, dong in my top That of could my have head. like killed you, well, it, hitting it, you on the top of the head. Yeah, That's... if I had that headache for a long well, time. Well, so you just answered an extra question. What was the funniest thing and most memorable thing? <laughs> well, that, that wasn't, that wasn't the funniest thing. It is today, it is today, right? Now, I, now when I think about it, it is, but it was like, That little lump man, on your head? Yeah, that's what we call it, that. It, right, is, right. it is a remembrance. Looks like a yarmulke. I'm it just is, saying, well, right? I, Yeah, I have a built-in yarmulke. But we Vietnam was, arduous being there. We were actually on station for over 120 days My without gosh. coming in sh shore. And that's a ship that's 45 feet wide, wow. 145 feet long. That's a wow. lot of days. It's a lot of days. You know, you, know, you, you see, mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of my, I've got a lot of favorite movies, but one of my favorite movies is Full Metal Jacket. You know? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Right, right. And, and uh, you know, you see the guys are going to the basic training and they go over to Nam and everything, right? So when, when you see this, uh, in comparison, your from a real, real point of view, real POV, how much does Hollywood really change it to what our viewers are seeing? On t mm -hmm. Well, it's like that now. Everyone has this big Hollywood thing, and it's yeah. not like that. No. What would you it's say? Not. It's Com not. Coming home. What was it like there and then coming home? How about that? Well, I, I, w I will tell you that over Vietnam was not 
anything like you see in Hollywood for me because they didn't show how shipboard life was. It was mm -hmm. basically very boring. Mm -hmm. Moments of sheer boredom, but, and then suddenly you're at general quarters and all hell is breaking loose mm -hmm. and it's terror because you don't know. Because it, uh, you know a plane can come out of anywhere or a bomb can hit right. you or something like this. And you didn't really know. I never had anything where I felt my life was actually in danger, thank mm -hmm. God. But I will tell you, when I came home, mm -hmm was the worst part of the whole thing. Oh, wow. We were spit on. When, out of Vietnam, there were Vietnam all the war posters. The we were told when we got, when, when I was first in the service and we would travel, mm -hmm. we were always proud to wear our uniform. Mm -hmm. During the last portion of my enlistment, mm -hmm. when you traveled, you were not allowed to wear your uniform. You were a target. Wow. They didn't want you wearing it. When we got out, they didn't want us referring to anything. We used to, everybody used to be, even though you couldn't wear your uniform, you'd mm -hmm. wear your jackets because you have a jacket, U.S. Navy. We weren't allowed to do that because we were a target. And that was the worst thing. We had gone and we thought the uniform was our red badge of courage being out there. Mm -hmm. We were very proud being a veteran, being a patriot. But when we came home, we found out what was going on with the process. Now, I don't like war at all anyway. Mm -hmm. but. We were there doing a job, and they looked like we, as individuals, had made this all happen. It wasn't. It was the government. Mm. And that's, that was the worst part of it. Uh, and, I, and I am so glad that things have turned around. Big time. That we salute yeah. all of our service people. We take care of them now. Uh, yeah. We work. I work with an organization called that. VFT, yeah, I see that. Veterans mm -hmm. in Film and Television. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a networking group that helps people that are in the industry or want to be in the industry connect, get jobs. We actually had, I think, six people that were an American sniper. Wow. So oh, we're, wow. we're very fortunate. And for me, it's wonderful meeting and getting to know the younger servicemen, whether they're on, we have guys that are on active duty and guys that are veterans. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the wonderful, wonderful aspect of being able to network with people of the same mindset because as you well know after being a veteran yourself mm -hmm. you have a different mindset mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. being a kid that's just running around and when you get into regimentation yeah. when you learn how to or follow orders you have honor ethics integrity and loyalty mm -hmm. that are far far beyond anybody that has not been in the military right and I, I know we, we talked a little bit before the show so yes. you you brought something with you you made some friends and have you kept in touch with any of these, I, any of these friends? I have one of my best friends, and he actually sent me, this is a cruise book, and on whenever you take a cruise uh, in, the, in the Navy, it's like a uh, book that you would have when you're uh, graduating high school. Oh, it's and like a my best, my best buddy was uh, uh, a guy named Ed Grimes. And let's see if I can find the picture of him in here. Eddie was, uh, Eddie was a sonarman. And you've had this, and you've had this for book yeah. for how long? I've, I've, I've. He actually sent it to me because I lost mine. Ed's at the top in the middle there. That's a great. Ed book. Grimes, That's a great shot. and just a great guy. And when I had, and which done, one is he? He's which the one top, is he? top middle right <clears throat> here. There. Nice, right there. Giving an give Eddie an old shout out there. Yeah. Hey Eddie, <coughs> good guy, man. Eddie, you're my buddy. Right. Good to see you, pal. Right. Yeah. He uh, actually sent me this book. <coughs> uh, he had an extra one. He had seen me, I, I, as you know, I'm an actor, mm -hmm. and I had done a Super Bowl commercial for Pepsi. Mm -hmm. And he saw it, we got back in touch with each other. I love Facebook, that's, that's the way, and I have people that I hadn't <coughs> seen in 40 or 50 years wow. that had actually connected with me. Speaking of 50 years, the, uh, do you have the picture of me? Well, so you said you're an actor? Yes. yes. So, so mm -hmm. the picture of you in the barber chair? Yes, yes, Santa. that actually came I would, out I would like of to see that picture. Rolling Stone magazine. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Rolling Stone magazine, and here's the picture. Look at that. I think we have a bigger shot of that. We That's got a bigger great. shot of that. Look at that. You guys see that? I love that picture. That was just a fun picture whenever that's you said that. Well, the, whole, like, the thing awesome. that's so cool about it is it looks like a Norman Rockwell. It totally and does. The people that took it told me that they're going to try and re-release it every single year oh. and different there's different variations. When was that shot? That was shot actually in 
April of last year. Oh, nice. And mm -hmm. it got into Rolling Stone and Entertainment Weekly magazine in December mm -hmm. of last year. And I was just so pleased with it. I love it. It's wow. a great shot. Are you kidding? It's a great shot. That's so awesome. I'm coming to your house for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually am. I, I play Santa all the time. Nice. In fact, I, I was Santa at the Veteran Stand Down at the Convention Center uh -huh. last Christmas, December 21st, giving toys out to homeless veterans and their children. God bless you, and man. And the best, the best thing, how could, how, what awesome. more could I ask for? I am so honored and so blessed to be able to give these kids and these homeless veterans toys and things that have been donated by our wonderful companies and people around town that are able to do so. Well, thank That's you awesome. so much, bud. Yeah, yes. Uh, it's, uh, and thank Rory, you for everything that you. you've done, and thank you, know, you for thank your you. service. How, how would our viewers, yes. if they wanted to get in touch with you, how would they be able to get in the touch The easiest way is on Facebook. Facebook, okay. Facebook, I'm there all the time. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, look me up, Rory O'Connor, mm -hmm. and I'm right there, and I'd love to make friends with anybody. I also do stand-up comedy across the nation, so if they see my name on a marquee, I also go by the name Uncle Rory. Nice. Please oh, come great. out and see me. See Rory. Yes, well, it's been an honor uh, having you on our show, and as I tell every veteran, thank you so much for your service, buddy. And thank you for your service. Thank you, Rory. Thanks, Rory. Rory O'Connor, ladies and gentlemen. So, much. so nice to meet you. Thank you, you so much. Uh, if you'd like to be a... a a guest on our show. If you're a combat veteran, please check us out right there at the bottom on the dog tag, mm -hmm. Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and before we go today, um, we did want to dedicate this episode to a very, very dear friend. Uh, I had a very good friend of mine, Al Kanef. I, um, him and I served together. Um, still tough. Him and I served together, <clears throat> um, and um, he just passed a few weeks ago. So we just did the uh, we just did the honor for him over at um, over in um, is it Fort Snelling? Fort Snelling, yes, Fort Snelling. So uh, I want to give a shout out to to uh, Al's family. Uh, we love you, Al. And uh, uh, here's a picture of Al. I took of him um, when we were stationed in Germany together. He was on CQ, and we were both young guns there. It's my brother in arms. So I love you, Al. Love yeah. you very much, buddy. We met, we're going to really miss you, but you're always in our hearts. Yeah. Again, uh, tune in next week on Life After War on EmpowerMe.tv. And we've you got some amazing veterans, and we look forward to it. Yeah. Thank you.